Welcome to another three and out presented by Comerica. I'm Danny Rogers and today we're getting the opposing view week six. Those Cincinnati Bengals are on the clock, so we want to get you fans the most prep that you possibly can be for Joe Burrow and those Bengals. And with that, we're bringing in Kelsey Conway, the Bengals beat reporter for the Cincinnati Inquirer. We're going to talk the three biggest headlines. Kelsey, we're going to talk Joe Burrow and that Jamar Chase connection. We're going to talk the improvement in the pass rush and then we're going to talk about why this Bengals team is not just any old Bengals team. They are new. They are in this game to compete this season. So Kelsey, let's start with the Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase connection. Burrow, he's not up there in the league in terms of yards, but his accuracy is up there. 72% Jamar Chase, the receiver, he's reaping those benefits. So what is making that duo so, so dynamic? Well, I think you have to start with their comfort with one another. Going back to their time at LSU, uh, Jamar Chase was one of the most explosive players, if not the most explosive player in college football when LSU won the national championship in 2019. And when he was drafted by the Bengals, Cincinnati was really hoping that what they shared together in 2019 would automatically transfer over. And it didn't necessarily right away um, Jamar Chase didn't play last year. He sat out and there was some rust to be knocked off between the two of them. That's why you saw the storylines of Jamar Chase not catching the ball as much as he should be. All of the things that kind of got everybody all riled up and saying is Jamar Chase, was he worth the number five overall pick? He said, sure. Well, he quickly put all of that to bed in week one um, with his terrific performance between Joe Burrow and him against the Vikings. I, I guess when you look at what's making it go, it's the fact that they both know what they expect from each other. Jamar Chase wants the ball. He wants explosive plays. And in the one game, he didn't get an explosive play against the Bears until garbage time essentially he made it clear to his quarterback and his play caller we need to be taking more shots down the field ever since that moment joe burrow and they they always seem to be off script plays where it's right before halftime or um you know joe burrow's just on his fifth read and he sees jamar beat someone um on a go route and he's wide open he bets on jamar to make a play and jamar expects him to find him down the field. And I think they both just understand that's what they expect of each other. And that's why I think it works. There's no gray area between the two. Mm -hmm. I know this Detroit Lions secondary is prepping for that Burrow Chase connection. And um, Burrow suffered a throat contusion against Green Bay last week. He was taken to the hospital. So is there any update on the playmakers ability to simply call out plays here come Detroit Sunday? So he is on um, he is on voice rest, which it's funny. I've never heard of a football player being on voice rest, but um, he has not been able to do any of his media availability this week, which has been um, disappointing because we haven't been able to ask him what exactly happened with his throat. But from what I've heard from uh, several of his teammates and Zach Taylor, they the Bengals are preparing to be on silent cadence regardless because they know it's going to be loud in Detroit and they know they're going on the road. So they don't think it's going to be that big of an issue that he can't really shout like he would and take control. Um, so from that standpoint, they think it's going to be OK, but it is an it is an interesting um, storyline heading into this game because we haven't been able to talk to Burrow. They say he's been fine in practice, but he if, if the game comes down to them needing to go no huddle, um, you wonder if it's going to play a factor in their communication and their ability to get the play out across the rest of the team. But um, he has practiced fully, so it's not limiting what he can do from a physical standpoint. It's just more about the communication with the rest of the team. I have a feeling Burrow does not totally mind not having to speak to the media this week and getting a break from that. Um, but let's let's switch sides of the ball. Uh, there's an improved pass rush in this Bengals defense. Um, they're eighth in the NFL right now with 13 sacks. Who has really been the boost to that that pass rush this season so far? Well, two players, Trey Hendrickson, who the Bengals signed in free agency from the New Orleans Saints, and he had 13 and a half sacks last year. And it is really hard in the NFL to replicate double digit sacks on a consistent basis year after year because of the attention that opposing teams give you, you know, so many different things. He has been everything that's been advertised. He's one of the hardest working players on the team. He's very blue collar in his work approach and he's all about football 
all the time. And Trey Hendrickson has made a leaps and beyond difference for this pass rush. And then Larry Ogunjobi, who the Bengals signed on a one-year deal. I mean, he's one of the more intriguing storylines about this Bengal team. He signed on a one-year kind of prove-it deal. Um, he was in Cleveland, which the Bengals knew him from his time in Cleveland, but he wasn't really making um, waves in Cleveland. Apparently, they had played him out of position a little bit. But he's come in on a one-year deal and he has been a force in the middle and he's really opened things up for those guys like Trey Hendrickson and um, Sam Hubbard to to rush off the edge because he's creating so much interior push up the middle. You hear a lot about this Bengals team saying they are not the same Bengals team that they were let's say last year when they went 4 and 11. So who are they now here in 2021? I think that's still to be determined. Um and I think this this game this weekend will will give us a lot of answers. They is tough because last year you kind of throw it out the window when you lose Joe Burrow. It's really hard to evaluate what this team is. But I think that they are finding their way in terms of leadership. They've got a lot of good leaders who have been with Zach Taylor now for going on their third season. So the leadership is there and that's something that they've been missing. Now it's just about putting a game where the offense and the defense both play at up to their potential together. We've seen flashes from the offense. We've seen flashes from the defense, but we haven't quite seen a game in which the Bengals put it all together and really show who they can be when they're clicking on all cylinders. So to be determined who these Bengals are, but I know that covering this team, the locker room is a very close knit group and they really believe in each other and their head coach, um, kind of similar to what's going on in Detroit. Um, but from a full, who are these Bengals on the field? It's, it's very hard to tell they're explosive on offense and they're, um, stingy on defense, but we haven't quite seen them put it all together in one game yet. But yeah, a lot of similarities here right now, both teams coming off of some heartbreakers there in week five. So it's it's got to be a good one in Detroit. Kelsey, we look forward to seeing you here in the Motor City. Thanks so much for all of your input and analysis.